All right, welcome everybody. Welcome to Coffee with Marcus. This is episode 57. And you see, usually in this Coffee with Marcus, we talk about the markets, we talk about my trading account, we talk about stocks. But today, this is a very special episode. Today, we're going to jump right in because we're going to talk about a tragedy that happened last week that uh, kept me up at night. It's really a, a true tragedy because a young trader, Alex Kearns, died on Friday, June 12th, after throwing himself in front of a train in his hometown in Naperville well in, in Illinois. This is the young trader, Alex. I mean, 20 years old. See, Alex had a $20,000 account with, with Robinhood, one of the brokerages, one of the many brokerages, and he was trading options. On Friday, June 12th, which right now is a little bit over a week ago, his trading platform showed a negative cash balance and a buying power of more than 730000 Let me just show this to you. This is the screenshot from Alex's computer or phone, wherever you see that it says cash negative, $730,000. See, Alex was 20 years old and uh, he, he thought he could never recover from a loss that, that he described as almost $1 million. This is according to his suicide letter. So he, he thought his life was over and so he took his, his own life. And this is a tragedy. And in this video, my goal in this video is I will show you exactly what happened. I will show you the trade that I believe Alex did. I will show you what went wrong so that you don't make the same mistake. See, the following, what I'm presenting here over the next few minutes is based on many hours of research. And uh, I'm listing all my resources here in the description. Also, very important, if you know somebody who is in crisis, right, please call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. The number is listed in the description as well, and I'm showing it here on the screen. See, when I heard about this tragedy last week, that, that a young 20-year-old trader took his life because he thought, he thought that he had losses that he could never recover from. I, I was shocked. I, I wanted to, to understand what happened. How, how could this 20-year-old trader with around $20,000 in his account have a $730,000 negative cash balance? Let me show this to you again. Of course, I understand if you look at this, that he could be devastated. So here is, I want to show you exactly what I think happened. And uh, what I'm presenting to you right now is my personal opinion based on my trading knowledge of many, many years, as well as my extensive research of this tragedy. I said, I, I spent countless hours on this. It really kept me awake at night. So Bill Brewster, his cousin, was very active on Twitter. He revealed more information there. So he said that Alex, this trader, was trading bull put spreads. So this means that you're selling a put and you're buying another put as protection. Now, I'll show you in a moment on the charts and on a trading platform exactly how this works. But my, my first thing was I wanted to find out what options was Alex trading. So we already know that he was trading a, a bull put spread. So there's a website. I want to show this to you. It's called Robin Track. Robin Track is a website that shows what stocks Robinhood users have in their accounts. See, the most popular is 4GE, AAL. Anyhow, I looked through most of the stocks and the only one that would make sense for this strategy here is Amazon. So Amazon is 19 and uh, it has $5 strike prices. So I want to show you what I think has happened. So here is the cha chart of Amazon. This is a daily chart. I marked the day when Alex took his life. So this is when his options expired and he had this this massive negative buying power in his account. So I believe, here's what happened, that a few days ago, Alex saw right here that Amazon was making new all-time highs. And uh, when you are putting on a so-called bull put spread, you're expecting a stock to be either neutral at the same level or go higher. And it is very, very typical for many traders to think that if a stock makes a new all-time high or new 52-week high, that it will continue to go higher. So I believe, based on my research, that Alex sold the uh, 2,550 put and he bought the 2,445 put as protection. Now, let me show you. Let me show you exactly what this trade looks like when we go onto the trading platform. See, we were trying right now to mimic something similar that has happened here. So I'm going to the trading platform. Obviously, I cannot put on the same trade that 
Alex put on. But here we are at Amazon. Uh, we're looking at an options chain with four days to expiration. So Amazon right now is trading at 2,700. And again, this is where going back to what Alex saw on the chart, he might have believed that uh, it will stay above 2,550. And that is the line that I have here. So if we use the current example, it would be like basically saying that Amazon will stay above 2,600 in, in our example here. So I just want to try to recreate this spread here. So in this case, we want to say that it stays above 2,000, maybe 650. So we would sell this put and then buy another one as protection. So let, let me actually show you first what happens if I would only sell the put. You see my the buying power this year, what I'm showing you is a $20,000 account, very similar to Alex's account here. So, but if I wanted to just sell the 2,670 put, I needed at least $100,000 to sell one of these options. Because here is what this does. When I'm selling the put at the strike price, it means that if Amazon goes below my strike price, I have to buy 100 shares of Amazon for each one option that I'm selling. So this is why the broker that I'm using here, Tastyworks, requires me to have at least $99,000, almost $100,000 in my account. However, if I'm as protection trying to buy a put that is just one strike price below, so now you see the buying power, the money that I need in my account to trade one of these, one of these bull put spreads is only $340. And uh, I can make $160 and I would risk $340. So maybe even Alex, uh, I believe that he was trying to make $200, risking $300. Again, that's my belief here. So looking at this to see exactly what's happening here. So I believe he was trying to make $200, risking $300 per one option. And uh, if my math is right here, I believe actually he was risking $500. I believe that he was trading three options. And I will explain to you of why I believe that he was trading three options here. This is based on the numbers that I've seen. Now, as you can see, Amazon on this day closed at uh, 2,554 and two cents. This means that right now, the put that he sold is in trouble. So it is below the put that he sold. So therefore, he has to buy Amazon at 2,550. Now, let me write this down. For each option that he traded, he would have to buy 100 shares of Amazon for $2,550. So if he was trading three options, this means that he would have to buy 300 shares at $2,550. So this brings it up to a total of $765,000 that he needed in order to buy these shares. Now again, Alex thought that he was protected by the 2,445 put because here's the deal. When we go to a platform, any platform, I mean, Robinhood probably does the same way. And uh, we're taking a look at the analysis and we see here exactly, okay, he's trying to make $200 and that he's protected and that all he can lose here is $300, right? I mean, so not bad at all. It should have actually worked out well, but uh, let's see what happens here. Since he got assigned, and this means that the stocks will be in his account on Monday. As I said, selling a put means that you have to buy the stock for the strike price. So what I believe happened is that the broker, in this uh, case, Robinhood, reserved the money for buying the stock. But you see, the stocks are not yet showing up in the account. And this is why Alex suddenly saw in his account a negative of 730000 Again, this is based on the math that I did here. So as you can see, it, it is possible. So he didn't have the money. Obviously, he didn't have enough money to buy these shares. So this is the broker would have sold the shares on Monday, June 15th. So let's take a look at the chart again. So this is what would have happened. And then Monday morning, the broker would have sold the 300 Amazon shares at the open. So the price at the open was $2,526. So let's think about it. He bought it for $2,550 and now he can uh, sell it for $2,526. So this means that he has a loss of $25 per one share. So this is the loss. So 
the loss $24 per share. And since he has 300 shares, the total loss would be $7,200. Now again, this already is kind of scary because he was actually thinking that he would only risk 500, that this would be his maximum loss here. So it is much more per one option. It is much more than the expected $1,500. So let's, let's talk about it. What happened? Alex, who took his life, said in his suicide note, it should have canceled out. And you see, this is a common misconception when you're trading spreads. No, it did not cancel out. Why? Because this was the date of expiration, June 12th, these options expired. So the protection that he had in place expired. So what do you need to do if you see that one of the options, if you're trading a bull put spread, as I believe he did based on the information that I have, and if then you are getting into the money, what do you need to do? You need to close the option because otherwise it can happen that you are getting assigned and when you are getting assigned you suddenly have to come up with a lot of money that you might not have now again the broker will not let it happen that your account goes negative for that huge amount that you saw here the seven hundred thirty thousand dollars but he could have lost possibly seven or eight thousand dollars depending on when he got filled. So the broker will sell the shares right away. But let's go back to the example. So close the option. The price of Amazon on that Friday when the options expired was 2,545 and two. So the value of the 2,550 option, so that it has a strike price of 2,550 is around $5, probably a little bit more here, but let's just say $5. Technically, it's $4.98, but you get the idea. So this means that you have a loss of $5 per share or $500 per one option traded. Now, since he traded three options, his loss would have been $1,500. This is when you close out the option, this is why it is so expensive. So you see, I believe that this happened led to the tragedy that he had a spread. He thought that he was protected, but then it turned out that one of the options expired and the other one that was deep in the money here, that was in the money by $5, he got assigned and the broker actually started reserving the money because he, he needs to buy these shares, but then he would have the shares in the account. But this is what led to this unbelievable cash of a negative of minus $730,000. And also, as you can see, the buying power of minus $730,000. Now, Alex saw this and thought he could not recover from this. But but let's talk about the, the important lessons here. And again, if you know anybody who is in crisis, or if you are in crisis, please call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. It's here. This is an important thing, but but let's talk about the lessons here. And then you, you could really help everybody here. If you shared this video here, I'm not asking for likes because it's tragedy. I don't want you to like this video because that, that's not the point. I want to show what happened and the important lessons that we can draw from this here. So there's three lessons. Number one, know what you're doing. See, these days, there's many people who make you believe that trading is easy. It is not. I believe that trading can be simple, but it's not that easy. Otherwise, everybody and his grandmother would be doing it. And this is what we see. We see young kids. I mean, my son is 17 years old. In his class, there is many kids who do have accounts with online brokers, the most popular being Robinhood here. And it is very important that you know what you're doing. So I can't stress this enough. Before you start trading and go to into the arena, make sure that you have education, education, education. What does it mean? This brings me to lesson number two. You gotta have a plan. And the plan tells you what to trade, when to enter. Alex that got that right. But number three is when to exit. And you see, this is one of the big mistakes that too many traders are making. They don't know when and how to exit. You won't believe the amount of emails and comments that I get on the YouTube videos where somebody says, I'm in this trade. I'm upside down. What should I do? And I'm always shocked where I say, how could you enter this trade without exiting it? Right? So this is uh, what I see is happening, especially right now, while we are still in this worldwide crisis, in this pandemic, where people lost their jobs and where we also see tremendous opportunities in the markets. 
So everybody wants to take advantage of it. Everybody wants to be there when the market rebound. And uh, see, this is when people jump into trading who are not yet educated. So this is why I'm so glad that you're here watching this video. So I don't understand you to expect fully what a bull put option is or what a bull put spread is. And you see, if you don't understand it, don't trade it. But let's talk about the third important lesson here. And the third uh, lesson here is a little bit more technical. And this is uh, for all options traders. Don't get assigned unless you really want to own the stocks. Close out options that are in the money if you don't want to get assigned. Because otherwise, you wake up the next morning and you have a bunch of shares in your account that you probably cannot afford and don't want to have. So I know it sucks. There's always this hope, right, that traders have. And hope is not a strategy, but there's this hope that maybe on Friday in after hours, the stock bounces back. It gets out of the money. No, when you see that you're close to getting in the money or when you have options that are in the money and you don't want to get assigned the stock, Exit, close it out, close out. Take your loss if there is a loss. Take your win if there's a win. If you leave a few dollars on the table, so be it. But don't get into a stock that you don't want to own and hope that on Monday it goes up. You see here in this case of, of Alex, Amazon went against him. It closed on Friday at 2,545 and then opened on Monday $20 lower. Now for Amazon, that's nothing. What's $20 on a $2,500 stock? Nothing. But it is enough to get you in trouble if you have a rather small account. So this is what I wanted to share with you. And um, I'm sorry if I'm not as, as uplifting and motivating as I usually are, because this really hit me hard. It hit me hard that I had to learn that this, uh, this trader, I want to bring his picture up here. Alexander E. Kearns from uh, Illinois took his life because he saw something in his account that scared him shitless. And honestly, I believe it would scare anybody shitless if you don't know what you're doing. And he thought that his life was over. And so he decided to, to end it, which is a tragedy and should never happen again. So I want to make sure, first of all, if you know anybody, no matter what, it doesn't have to be right trading, who is in crisis, or if you are in crisis, for whatever reason, please do call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. It is so important. And secondly, when you are trading, please make sure that you know what you're doing and please make sure that you do not only know what to trade. Alex knew what to trade. He wanted to trade Amazon. He wanted to trade a bull spread spread. Do not only know when to enter. Alex knew exactly when to enter. But the third and most important, know when to exit. Have an exit plan. And an exit is either with a profit, yay, or with a loss. Losses are part of the business. All right, hope this helps. Please share this video with as many people as possible so that they know what happened here. And again, this is based, to, uh, based on my research and what I think happened here. I don't know it for a fact. All we know is that a young man, 20 years, uh, ended his life. He lost his life because he didn't know what happened to him when he saw this massive $730,000 loss that wasn't even a loss. It was just that the broker reserved the money and uh, it would have been all resolved. He would have probably had a loss of seven, $8,000. And yes, that's bad because he was planning on only having a loss of $1,500, right? So make sure that you, that you know what you get into.